You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into another exciting Locked On crossover here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is JJ Jackson. I serve as the host of Locked On Blue Devils, and I'm joined by my good friend Jay Stevens, the host of Locked On Buckeyes. Here we are a year later reunited as tonight in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. We've got a top 25 matchup on the hardwood between the Duke Blue Devils and the Ohio State Buckeyes. We're going to talk about it all here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils and Locked On Buckeyes. Our show today is brought to you by our friends over at Sling TV. This episode brought to you by Sling TV is you don't want to miss this week's matchup. A lot of conference championship games that you can watch right here on Sling, the TV you love for a price you'll love. Try it today. As we dive in to Locked On Blue Devils and Locked On Buckeyes, a big basketball game tonight. And Jay, as we said, we were doing this this time last year. Good to see you again, my friend. Hope all is well. Yes, JJ, good to see you as well. All is well. we got a big matchup. Will it be the same outcome as last year? Or will the home team win the matchup in back-to-back years? Little something I didn't think I would say last year. It's still kind of stunned that I can say it this year, that last year Ohio State won this matchup in Columbus. This year, it's at Cameron Indoor, a wild, crazy place to play. I wonder what Chris Holtman's boys will bring to the court tonight. Yeah, that's a big question to be asked because you're right. I will spend a little bit more time later talking about last year's matchup in this one. But the one big, big, big storyline is that Mike Krzyzewski is not on the sidelines for Duke men's basketball. John Shire has taken over after 42 years that Coach K was leading the Duke basketball program. So we'll have plenty to talk about that a little bit later in the show. I do want to talk about Chris Holtman and Bunch there with the Ohio State men's basketball team, because here we are a few weeks into the year, first week of November, the season's off and running. So teams have played eight to 10 games each in this new basketball season. And it's a top 25 matchup. Ohio State is now in the AP top 25 at number 25 after recently competing in the Maui Invitational. What's been going on with the Ohio State basketball season this year? It's been a lot of meshing of new players, not just new players that are freshmen, but new players that are on the Ohio State basketball team, as there are quite a few transfers and quite a few freshmen that are on the court this year together. Also, you have Justice Suing, who had a career game against, I believe, Cincinnati, scoring 33 points, a career high for him. Didn't play on the team last year due to injury, missed the entire year. So you have a guy who missed last year, who's a captain, who's a leader on the team this year. You got four new freshmen, four freshmen on the team that are all playing. And you got some key contributors, starters that were playing elsewhere last year in college basketball that are now playing in Columbus. So Chris Holtman has an interesting task. In the era of the new transfer portal war, where you and I cover both basketball and football, the There's a transfer portal about to open. A lot of college football players will enter that on December the 5th. In the era of the portal, Chris Holtman has learned quickly how to utilize that and how to build a roster quickly via the new tool that is the transfer portal. And guys like Isaac Likely and Tanner Holden and Sean McNeil, they are key contributors. Some are starters. Some are guys you can rely on and that are just doing what they can to quickly put this team together and mesh and gel and build chemistry build chemistry early on in this college basketball season. Five and one, the record for Ohio State. The one loss on the year came in Maui to San Diego State. But as you said, impressive wins over Cincinnati, a win over a top 25 team in Texas Tech at number 21. What has been the biggest strength of this Buckeyes team this year? Honestly... The biggest strength is your leading scorer coming off the bench. Well, that's one of these strengths. I won't say it's, that's the biggest. One of the bigger strengths, the bigger stories to me, is the emergency and just the continued growth for Zed Key. Now, the leading scorer on the year is Bryce Sensible. Uh, don't have the numbers right in front of me at this point in time. Uh, yes, I do. Leading the team in scoring 15.8 points per game um, as a freshman, shooting 52, 53% from the field. And he doesn't start. 
Like, it's odd to me that your leading scorer, and I get he's a true freshman. I get that this is a first time playing college basketball, but he's your leading scorer. You, you're getting contributions and uh, a couple more guys that are averaging double digits uh, in scoring and Justice Suing and Zed Key. You have two more guys that are averaging nine a game in Sean McNeil and Bruce Thornton. I think Zed Key is one of the bigger stories. He continues to grow, be a big piece down low. Uh, for, throughout the first three games, I believe he was averaging a double-double, just walking double-double double machine he was. But Bryce Sensiball has quickly figured out the speed, the pace, the agility that's needed, and the strength that you need to be successful in college basketball. And he continues to be a big piece of the pie, any force on the offensive end for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Yeah, I mean, anytime you get freshmen contributing, that's huge for the future of your program and what you can do in that year. Duke has certainly done that, as you know, Jay, for over the last decade, as Duke has become such a prominent one-and-done school with all the players in last year's game uh, being drafted into the NBA this year in the matchup there. I'm glad you mentioned Zed Key, though, because he had quite the outing last year against the Duke Blue Devils, and he is the one known commodity with Ohio State basketball that we've seen in years past coming back for another season there in Columbus. Tell us a little bit more about Zed Key and what he's been able to do this season. One of the biggest things about Zed Key is that he has continued to put time in, put the work into making his body physically fit and conditioned for the long, grueling college basketball season. I think we always lose sight that these are student athletes. Now, there's a lot of emphasis on them for being athletes, but to be a college athlete, they have to be a student first. And Zed Key has been able to learn how to uh, manage the time between practice, team meetings with the team, study sessions in class. And he has continued to chisel his body out and be better conditioned for the college basketball season. I know last year, going into last season, talked about how he lost 10 to 15 pounds. Looks like he's in better shape physically and healthier at the beginning of this season. You get to see a little bit more indentation and uh, definition, excuse me, on the muscles on his arms. That's a big piece of the pie. And if he's doing that with his body via his diet and his workouts, you will see that actually be a big reason why he was averaging a double-double earlier in the year. I say averaging. He's not very far off to, from averaging a double-double right now. He's currently averaging, if I can get the Zed Keys numbers, eight and a half rebounds a game. That's not far. Someone like himself can average 10 and 10 plus in both categories. Zed Key, his, the determination he has to be determined to work on the physical conditioning of his body is a big reason, big reason why he has been a force down low for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Really impressive with the scoring offense for Ohio State in total. 79 points per game to average for the Buckeyes. Duke coming in averaging 71 points per game. Duke has pride itself on the defensive end of the floor, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the Duke Blue Devils in just a moment. Do want to let you know, Ohio State and Duke tonight, the ACC Big Ten Challenge. You can watch it on ESPN, 7.15 p.m. Eastern time. Should be a good one. What a fun episode we've got today of Locked On Blue Devils and Locked On Buckeyes. This is a very special Locked On crossover here today on the Locked On Network, your team every day. Our show today is brought to you by our friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From football, and oh boy, do we have football at Bet Online. It's conference championship week. You got to go see all the lines and props out there. Also, basketball, soccer, and esports. It's all covered at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at Bet Online as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. And as we roll on with this Locked On crossover with the Locked On Buckeyes podcast and Locked On Blue Devils podcast, getting all of you ready for the ACC Big Ten challenge matchup between the number 17 team of the land, the Duke Blue Devils, and the number 25 team of the land and the AP poll for the very first time this year, the Ohio State Buckeyes. JJ, you mentioned it earlier. First year in a very long time, 40 plus years since Duke has not been led by Coach K. 
How has it been so far without having Coach K on the sidelines? It's been strange. It's been strange, Jay. It really has. It's uh, taken a lot to get used to. There is such a large uh, population of Duke basketball fans, myself included, who our entire lifetime, I'm giving away my age here, but I, I, I'm less than 42 years old, Jay. Like my entire lifetime, Coach K has been the head coach for Duke men's hoops. And so uh, what is it like when John Shire takes over the program? It's been really different seeing a different man on the sidelines for Duke men's basketball, but the recruiting has been the same. Duke once again has the number one recruiting class for the next two years. They've been able to bring in incredibly uh, high-rated basketball players, tons of talent on a roster that went all the way to the Final Four a year ago. 11 new players on this year's team, only two guys back from last year's squad. Tons of freshmen having to contribute once again for Duke. But, yeah, to answer your question, it has been definitely different not having Coach K there in Durham. It's weird, I will say as well. I'm not going to tell my exact age, but I am just like JJ my entire lifetime. Coach K has <laughs> been there at Duke. John Shire, he's a Dukey. And I had a feeling it was going to be a Dukey that would be someone that would take over for Coach K. But anytime you come after come into a program that's an elite college basketball program, it's tough. But then you add in the history of Coach K, the number of national championship wins that he has, the number of Final Four trips, the number of ACC championships, both regular season and conference tournament. It's tough, man. And John Shire, he knew what was right in front of him, but he had no idea. I mean, you know what's in front of you, yeah. but I don't think anybody knows, J.J., what is what is what John Shire is going through. And I don't think, J.J., John Shire was ready to – take on everything that's, that, that's happened so far. How do you think he has done early in the season? Yeah, I think that's definitely a conversation that a lot of Duke fans are having eight games into the year. Duke right now sitting with a 6-2 and two record. I will say Coach K took over the Duke program at the age of 33. John Shire is also 33, set to turn 34. Very similar backgrounds, both from the Chicago area. John Shire played four years for Duke, culminating and winning the 2010 National Championship as a player. He also was on staff for nine seasons with Mike Krzyzewski. So, uh, Coach Cato, you're replacing a guy that's got five national championships, 13 Final Fours, the most wins in the history of the sport. No one has won more games than Mike Krzyzewski. So that is massive steps and shoes to follow uh, for John Shire. But I think he's done a fair job. I think trying to figure out the rotation – uh, with a deep roster, with nine people that are really contributing right now at this point of the year, trying to figure out your lineups with two seven-footers and Derek Lively and Kyle Filipowski, how they're going to be able to factor in throughout the season has been a bit of a challenge. And their top recruit, and Derek Whitehead, has been sidelined from injury. He's now coming back and trying to work him up to speed and into game shape. That's been difficult as well. But at the end of the day, You've won more games than you've lost. You've had a couple of impressive wins at the Nike event. You're playing really good defense. Duke is still a top five team in the entire country in rebounding categories. They've done some impressive things so far. That's a good sign of a young coach, a new coach at any level coming after a legend. The things you discussed, the, the rebounding, the defense, those are some things that Duke can build on. Duke has only two losses on the season. One's against Kansas, one's against Purdue. Kansas, a good basketball school, good basketball team. Purdue might be surprising some people, but they're really good as well. Only having two losses on the year is really a luxury for any coach. New coach, not a, not a, not a new coach doesn't matter. It's a luxury. Who are some players at Duke this year that have been key for them to have a 6-2 and two record right now? Yeah, Kyle Filipowski is the first one that comes to mind. A seven-foot freshman, a bit of a stretch four. He can really shoot the ball from the outside. He started his career at Duke this season with three consecutive double-doubles. Nobody has ever done that before in the history of Duke basketball. A guy by the name of Marvin Bagley III did it two consecutive games to start his college career, and we know how good of a player he was at Duke for that one season. But he didn't do it three straight games, and Filipowski did. So he's rebounding the ball really well. And then the one returner that has been a big player for Duke from last year's Final Four squad is their point guard in Jeremy Roach. 
He's back for his junior season. He's done a really nice job scoring the basketball. I think Duke fans, uh, myself included, want to see him distribute the ball a little bit more. And that's, again, something that Duke's trying to kind of work into is their rotations and spreading the ball, spacing the floor, kind of making it all fit together. But two players to be on the lookout for would definitely be Filipowski, number 30 for Duke, and then the point guard, number three, Jeremy Roach. Do you see any issues with this team that might be alarming, that could be a problem, especially once Duke begins league play? Yeah, shooting from the outside has definitely not been great for Duke. The loss against Purdue, which I'm glad you mentioned them, Jay, because your, your Ohio State fans are going to know a lot about Purdue. They're in the Big Ten. You're going to have some big matchups with them this year, of course. Uh, Purdue played Duke this past weekend as the number 24 team in the country. After winning the Phil Knight Legacy event, they skyrocketed yes. all the way up to number five in the AP poll. What a rise for Purdue, the number five team in the land. And in that game, they just dominated the glass. I mentioned that Duke's a top five rebounding team, but all of a sudden, Purdue did a really good job of rebounding the basketball and limiting those second chances for Duke. And at the three-point line, Duke shot just two of 19 from three-point range. Horrific shooting display from the Blue Devils in their loss to Purdue. So uh, in terms of what was a struggle for Duke so far this year, it's been consistency on the offensive end of the floor, which in years past, when you bring in the number one recruiting class, you're worried about the defensive side of the floor. That has not been the case whatsoever for Duke. It's been a matter of consistently scoring and knocking down shots from the outside. You know, as a coach like Chris Holtman is, Anytime you've been around college basketball, not just that one stop, but multiple stops along the way, these bigger matchups, you're going to have the upper hand over a guy coaching in this type of matchup, this type of challenge for the very first time. Now, granted, like I mentioned, Josh Shire's already coached against, as I can get back to my um, proper screen on my computer. John Shire's all already played and already coached against Kansas, uh, coached against Xavier, who has a good coach there, and coached against Purdue. So he's played against some really good teams, disciplined teams, also some really good college basketball coaches. So one might say Chris Holtman has the upper hand, but John Shire might just throw everything out there and say, hey, we've only worked in this play or this out-of-bounds play once or twice. How about we try this? Because the last thing I want to do is to have back-to-back -back losses, two against Big Ten, yeah. and both being Big Ten teams. So John Shire could either come into this game either nervous or even or, or confident because, hey, he's a young guy. What, what does yeah. he have to lose? Just try something. So do you think that Duke might play – uh, a little bit crazy, like the Cameron Crazies will be tonight. Yeah, I think that that's certainly something to point out as well, is that it is a home game, Jay, right? Like they're playing inside Cameron Indoor Stadium, which is an incredible environment in college basketball. Uh, that's why I really love these ACC Big Ten Challenge yeah. games, is, is getting to see other venues across college sports and college athletics. Uh, but in a defense of John Shire, while, yes, he hasn't been the head coach, so to speak, for the past nine seasons, he was on staff with Mike Krzyzewski, and it's not like he was just sitting there not <laughs> listening or observing or learning. You know, like he, he was smart, and he was able to pick up on a thing or two from Coach K. So he's going to be very well prepared for a task like this, and I'm really excited to see the game tonight. I am as well. I'm also excited to roll on to discuss more what is – What's at stake tonight for both of these schools, either pros or cons, wins or loss? Both schools have a lot riding on this game, and they can use it as a building block for success down the road. We'll discuss that next right here as just Locked On crossover with Locked On Buckeyes and Locked On Blue Devils continues. Thanks for making this Locked On crossover your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out Locked On Sports today from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your fine podcast. JJ, we saw last year. We saw the outcome of the game. We saw how the game went down. We saw the court storming almost at field because I've been watching so much college football this year. We saw the court storming there in Columbus. 
And I think when we look at what's at stake, at least from the Ohio State point of view, it's the building block type of game for the Ohio State Buckeyes. I mentioned earlier, you're meshing. There's a lot of chemistry that you're trying to build. And if you can go on the road after playing in Maui in that weird type of situation where you're playing back-to-back-to-back days against some really good competition, you come back, you're on the road still in a very hostile environment, and you get a win on the road, that's a way to build some chemistry and confidence with a team that's trying to do that and doing that somewhat well early in the season. That's a quick snapshot, JJ, at what's at stake for Ohio State in a positive way. What do you think is at stake for Duke in this game? Yeah, I mean, certainly when you look at the magnitude of a game like this, these teams don't necessarily need to be worried as much about building your tournament resume because they play in great conferences. Duke plays in a great conference in the ACC. Ohio State is going to get really tested in a great basketball conference in the Big Ten this season. But to be tested against other opponents uh, at that Power Five level, you're really going to get to walk away impressed by what you see on the other end of the floor. So uh, for Duke, the idea of coming to get a little bit of a payback from a year ago, although, again, only two players were on the squad last year, the coaching staff remembers. Duke fans certainly remember. I mean, what a game that was. Duke had a 15-point lead in the second half mm-hmm. against Ohio State in Columbus last year. Duke, the number one team in the country at the time, one year ago today, and led by Zed Key's career-high 20 points. The final four and a half minutes, Duke didn't score at all, and the Buckeyes were able to come back and win. So I think there's an element of a get-back that's going to come to mind with a lot of these guys because I know the current Duke recruits on the roster were watching a game like this a year ago. and They want to live up to the task and know there are going to be a lot of people watching a big game like this. So, uh, And it's an opportunity for Duke to get back right because they lost the last game they played. They lost on Sunday against Purdue. So uh, I think those are kind of the big things that come to mind for what's at stake for Duke. What about for Ohio State on your end? I do think that with Ohio State, when you have a guy like Bryce Sensabaugh, who's your leading scorer, you have Zed Key, who has been, was a double-double machine earlier in the season, you get, you're get you getting Sean McNeil to get more involved in the offense and doing not just the three-point shooting, but some curls, um, some pick and pop, some um, uh, 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 things off things off of screens and things, things of that nature. Um, you're going to get him as well to be someone, hey, he's played good basketball. Played for a good coach previously. Played in some crazy environments. So you're going to get him. He's building confidence. You get Justice Suing on the heels of a career high for him, 33 points, who's getting his feet wet. I mentioned building chemistry, but now you're going to start to you're going to start to see who is going to be your one, your two, and your third leading score in this for the team. Will it be Bryce Sensible? Will he start? Will he not start? I think he should start. I think he should should consistently start. I think Justice Suing can be a leader, and he can be a better leader by putting the ball in the basket more. I think Sean McNeil can be a big piece of the pie. I think Zed Key can do it as well. But how will those pieces do it together consistently? Also, I thought going into the season, Wright State transfer Tanner Holden would be someone who would average 10 to 12 points a game. Do we see the emergence in him have his season high in this game as well. All things that we're going to be thinking about, but I think for Ohio State, it's building chemistry and kind of getting the hierarchy, may want to say, and who's going to be your first, second, and third leading scorer and how the other players can contribute in a hostile environment that will be Cameron Indoor tonight. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one. Again, 7.15 p.m. Eastern, Duke and Ohio State. We're going to definitely be glued to our television sets watching this one unfold. Last year's game was so memorable, and while it was unfortunate from the Duke perspective to end up with a loss, it is kind of cool to watch teams get to celebrate the way in which they do when you knock off the number one team. And again, Jay, last year, a 15-point lead for Duke in the second half that had the number one overall pick in the draft in Paulo Bancaro, a team that had five NBA draft picks last year, a school record, and yet Ohio State led by Zed Key and E.J. Liddell, who had a big double a year ago, they were able to pull off the big upset. 
Yeah. It's it's still insane to me, JJ, that we're talking about this a year later, and that was the outcome. Uh, Fifteen point lead, no points for Duke in the final four and a half. That's unheard of. I still remember Zed Key. I remember still remember some of the things he did and the excitement on his face, and still seeing the scene from the shot, as they call it in Columbus, from the arena. There, it's still insane. It's still wild. It's crazy, and I'm looking forward to one the Cameron Crazies being crazy tonight, but also number two. I'm looking for this to be a great basketball game. We've seen a lot of great basketball already, but I think tonight, not just this being one of those Thanksgiving tournaments or uh, shootouts or imitationals, whatever you want to call them, or being one of those neutral side games like Kansas and Duke were earlier in the year. How about we just get a game on campus at a home court where you know the home fans and the students will bring it with the energy that's what I love about college basketball. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I keep saying crazy on purpose. Insane, wild, crazy atmosphere tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. Again, Duke and Ohio State in the ACC Big Ten Challenge, 7.15 p.m. Eastern starts. What a game it's going to be, and we'll have reaction for you throughout the rest of the week here on the Locked On Network. We appreciate so much your support for watching and listening to this Locked On crossover here on the network. Both Locked On Blue Devils and Locked On Buckeyes are available wherever you get your podcasts. If you're listening on the Apple Podcast platform, we love those five-star ratings and reviews. The algorithms love when you leave us a written review, so take the time to do that. And also, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channels to watch the show daily each and every day. Jay, this was a whole lot of fun. We'll have to do it again sometime soon, my friend. I, I agree. Maybe in the NCAA tournament field of 68, <laughs> I would love to have this matchup once again. And I'll say it. I mean, Duke's not to Ohio State levels, but big shout out to Mike Elko for putting together an 8-4 and four record on the gridiron in his first season as the Duke football head coach. Might have to have a football matchup be set up sometime soon, man. <laughs> would love to do that. Yes. I think it would have to make me Duke playing a lot out of their minds for a few years for that to happen. 100%. But uh, I would love it. I would you. love Duke, Ohio State on the football <laughs> field. Those that are football fans of Ohio State might say Duke would never be on Ohio State's level. I think that's probably true. <laughs> but crazier yeah. things could be done. Let us have our moment in the sun just to play a great <laughs> school like that. That would be so much fun. Thanks again for watching and listening to this Locked On crossover here today on the Locked On Podcast Network. For Jay Stevens, I'm JJ Jackson.